Yo, welcome to Magic Magikarp's you do. So today we're going to be going over Sander's latest creation and one of the coolest decks to come out with new battle styles cards, and that is the expanded Orbeetle box. So uh, before I go into this, there's going to be a deck profile at first, and then we're going to get into some gameplay. So if you're the type of person who is you're like, I'm confident, I can look at the deck, know exactly what's happening. Well, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the second half of the video where there is a game against Ikaru. But we're going to look at the deck because there's a lot going on, a lot that one game can't really show you, but also I'm sure 10 games can't really show you. So this is an incredibly impressive deck using Evomancy or Beetle that just released. So I will also say I'm not an expert on this deck. I know it fairly well. I feel pretty confident that I can give you a good 80 to 90% rundown of everything and what they're for. But I'm not Sander. I did not invent the deck. I don't know absolutely everything about the deck, but we're going to do our best. So the idea here is we use Ore Beetle with the Evomancy attack. For each energy attached to this Pokemon, search your deck for a stage two Pokemon, except Ore Beetle, and put it onto your bench. So what we've done is we put a ton of very, very cool stage twos in here. This is a control deck, of course. Why wouldn't you play a control deck? Control is ridiculously powerful and expanded right now. You either play it or you beat it. So we combo the triple acceleration energy with that Evomancy attack, attach it, and this lets us search for three stage two Pokemon. The stage twos we have are all here for very specific reasons. We have Stoutland. Stoutland with the Sentinel ability says your opponent cannot play supporter cards from their hand. It's a big deal. They can't shuffle their deck. Makes it easier to deck them out. They can't play Guzma to switch because most people in Expanded don't play switch. They play Guzma. And then they can't target anything on your bench. Powerful combo. We're playing Unpheasant. This is a card I actually didn't know until I watched Sander play the deck. Strong wins for a triple acceleration energy. Three colorless. Shuffle all cards attached to each player's Pokemon into that player's deck. Ridiculous attack. It lets us do a couple things. One is against something like Pikaram or Turbo Dark. They vomit energy everywhere. We get out the Unpheasant. Triple Acceleration, Strong Winds, shuffle all the energy back. Ooh, they're not in a good spot. Also against something like Dragapult. We can shuffle all their energy back. They don't play Energy Acceleration and shuffle any tools back. So we get our abilities back as well, which is one of the main features of the deck. So Unpheasant, very good against those turbo decks that like to vomit energy everywhere. Also, a niche situation where you might shuffle tools back on a, uh, on a Garbodor to get our abilities back. We play a Galarian Obstagoon. So it has the ability Wicked Ruler, a cool ability, but Sandra said it is not in here for the ability. I have seen people say otherwise. That's uh, not true. Ability is cool. You can use it. Uh, have your opponent discard cards so they have four cards in their hand. The reason Sander said it's actually in here is the Knuckle Impact attack. It is the most efficient attacker that we have. For three colorless, can do 180. Why would you need to attack? You're a control deck. There are situations where your opponent has something you can't really deal with. Knuckle Impact gives you the ability to knock out things that can really annoy us. So the 180 attack is there for the ability to take care of things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to knock out. You know. Stoutland is 90, 90 just ain't, ain't that good. And of course, the ability can come in handy in certain situations as well. So Obstagoon really has both things going for it. Also has a tanky 170 HP. So just an all around good card, not one of your go-to. Burning Shadows Vile Plume. Uh, we have the egg route package in here of both Vile Plumes. If this is your active Pokemon, your opponent's basic Pokemons can't attack. Very important caveat there. Some other Pokemon that are wall Pokemon say cannot be damaged, like Decidueye. Decidueye cannot be damaged by V Pokemon or V Max Pokemon, but they can still attack. They can still poison. Bioplume, they literally cannot attack. They can't do anything. Double Blaze GX on a Reshizard doesn't go through it because you can't double blaze. This card is auto winning a lot of matches. And so it's just good. It's good to have as an option. Sometimes you see your opponent's list, you know your opponent's deck, and you're like, well, you can't deal with this, can you? No, no, they really can't. One of the most powerful cards in the deck, Vile Plume with Irritating Pollen. Neither player can play item cards. That's fine. We mostly use supporters. Our items are to set up. So we really want to prioritize this Irritating Pollen Vile Plume. Arguably the best card in the deck, Dual Brains. During your turn, you may play two supporter cards. They banned Lieutenant Surge's strategy from Expanded because it was too broken. I agree with that because it is in fact very broken. But Dual Brains lets us pull off some ridiculous plays. I'll get to those when we get to the supporter line, but being able to play two supporters is good. 
being able to combo dual brains with some of our supporters actually gives us infinite loops and infinite combos that are essentially unbeatable. We also play Aegislash, Big Shield, all my Pokemon, or all of our po Pokemon take 30 less damage from our opponent's attacks. Very big deal. This prevents our stage twos from getting O code from certain situations, and then we can heal them. So the extra 30 HP, the extra 30 damage, just generally nice. Throw our opponent off. They don't get to Guzma Oko us, buys us more time. And Dusknor from Vivid Voltage, all special energy attached to Pokemon, provide colorless energy. There's a lot of special energy reliant decks in the format. This just gives you a chance to say, hey, you can't actually do anything about it. Mewtwo and Mew, for example, they can play a Stealthy Hood so that they can get around this. But once you remove that Stealthy Hood, uh, they suddenly can't attack with anything anymore. And so this beats stuff like Mad Party pretty effectively. It can really hinder Mewtwo decks, any other special energy decks that might pop up as well. They exist. You'll run into them pretty frequently. So we have all these stage two, two options that are used in a variety of different situations, depending on when you're going to use them. We'll look at the specifics of when you're going to use them uh, a bit in the Picaron matchup. Like I said, any special energy reliant deck, we got Dusknor, Dual Brains, and Irritating Paul and Vileplume. We're almost always going to use them. They are so, so, so powerful. Item lock, good. Using two supporters, very good. You can play Stellar Wish Jirachis. It's just extra consistency. Really, the way the deck loses is by not setting up. So by using Stellar Wish, we're able to find supporters, rare candies, Pokemon communication, stuff like that, even more frequently. We also play a Lucario Melmetal GX. We use this for the full metal wall attack. We probably aren't going to tank too much, although to be fair, between full metal wall and Aegislash, we could tank if we really wanted to with minus 60, but we're using it for the energy removal. This is one of the best ways to remove energy because for a double colorless energy, we can just go ahead and say, hey, that's cool that you loaded six energies on that Picarom. Get rid of all of them. Easier to use than Unpheasant. So it's in here as an option, so we don't have to get out Unpheasant. If our opponent makes a play where they're suddenly like, I'm going to put a bunch of energies on a Pokemon, or I'm just going to sit there with one Pokemon and make you deal with it, the Luke Metal can be benched out of nowhere and be used to remove all of those energies. And Zacian, use Intrepid Sword. Same way you do in standard format, just draw more cards, early game consistency. Late game, you don't really want it. And a Munchlax. Late game poke, snack search, lets us get stuff back. You don't really attack with this deck. Most turns, you're just going to say pass. Instead of saying pass, flip a coin, get a card back. Kind of good. Without items, there's not really a way to get cards back very efficiently. So we have all these different Pokemon, some for setup. War Beetle for setup. Drachi for setup. And then a ton of different options. We have, poke, we have a bunch of trainer cards in here. Comp search, just extra consistency. You got to set up. Field blower, get rid of float stones off of Garbodors. Again, very big deal because we don't want to give something like Dragapult uh, Garbodor the ability to have items back. So they get a tool on it. We can set this up, set up the irritating pollen vial plume. They can no longer shut off our ability. Pokemon communication, interesting choice. Very important choice. Not Ultra Ball, not Quick Ball, Keycom. We play a bunch of Pokemon, cool, it's almost always live. But most importantly, we put our stage twos back in the deck. Evomancy says it comes out of the deck. So if we start a Magnezone in our opening hand, we can't use Evomancy to get that Magnezone back out. So we have to Pokemon Communication, put it back in the deck. Three are candies. Three's been fine. Uh, for the most part, the handful of games that I played with the deck were just... Rare candy was not the issue. The issue was just getting things ready to go and not losing early. So three is plenty. I don't think you'd ever want to go below three. That feels really risky. One stretcher. You're going to see stretcher come and play in the game we play, actually. But if your opponent does go for the Guzma KO on something, you want to just go, okay, cool. I'm going to shuffle it back in. I'm going to use Ore Beetle. I'm going to put it back on the bench. Silent Lab. Important card to shut off opposing Zacians being one of the big ones so that they can't actually use Intrepid Sword to draw more cards so we can kind of set up a lock. They also can't accelerate energy that way. Also slow down your opponents so they can't use Lele, the Dene GX, or any other Pokemon like that. So Silent Lab is the current choice to just shut down all of those consistency Pokemon. Instructor Ranguru, Lele, the Dene, Zacian with Intrepid Sword. So the ideal stadium of choice, 
Now the supporter line, massive, massive, massive supporter line because we're almost always setting up item lock and we're using dual brains to use two in a turn. AZ, AZ lets us pick up any Pokemon. Usually you'll want to use it on say a Zacian if you get your board set up, maybe pick up a Jirachi, you know, you want to clean up your board. AZ just lets us go, I'm going to pick this Pokemon up, essentially a scoop up net for any Pokemon. Cheryl's actually one of the most powerful cards in this. At first, when I looked at the list, I was like, wait, why? And then I remembered Cheryl is any evolution Pokemon. So it lets us heal. So something like Dragapult, for example, they start spreading damage around there. Man, eh, you know what? Cheryl. We can actually loop Cheryl forever too with Dual Brains Magnezone. What we do is we got Cheryl and Lucimine. Lucimine, put any two, two of any combination of supporters and stadiums from your discard pile into your hand. So something like Dragapult starts hitting us, totally fine. We have Aegislash out there, so they only hit 100 on the active. They don't KO anything we have. Put five damage counters, sick. Play Lusamine, Lusamine for Cheryl, and Lusamine, a second Lusamine. Play the Cheryl. Next turn, play Lusamine, get back Cheryl and another Lusamine. Play the Cheryl. We actually never get knocked out. So in certain matchups, the Cheryl is essentially just an auto win because we can constantly recycle it every single turn with Dual Brains Magnezone. You can play Lusamine, get back the Cheryl, play the Cheryl. Lusamine, get back the Cheryl, play the Cheryl. You get the idea. Then we can get something like Picarom, for example. Against Picarom, you get out the Age of Slash. They full blitz for 120. Under Item Lock, they can't E-Power, so they can't actually KO any of our Pokemon. We get the Cheryl chain going on. They can't KO our Burning Shadows Vile Plume with um, Electros because they're under item lock, so they can't play E Power, Cheryl it every single turn. They can't actually win the game. Cynthia Caitlin acts as a more consistent Lusamine. Also, if you prize a Lusamine, it's essentially a third Lusamine to get back supporters. Same thing with Dual Brains Magnezone. Cynthia Caitlin, get back a supporter. And consistency to draw three cards, which is nice and can discard cards from your hand, which can also come in handy. Your opponent might end you. You know, you don't have your Stoutland set up to prevent the end. Eh, just getting rid of extra cards under item lock is good. You don't need PCOM. You don't need rare candy after a while. So just discard them with Cynthia Caitlin, draw more cards, get back a supporter. So it's essentially a third Lusamine to guarantee we always have access to two ways to get back a supporter in every game. Baba under item lock, let's get rid of energies. Let's us get rid of tools, anything like that. Against decks like Tina Chomp, for example, they play four energies, and that's essentially it. Faba, 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 you win the game. So Faba, just a ridiculously powerful card. It's actually kind of broken, because even if they play Special Charge and we don't set up Item Lock, who cares? It goes to the Lasso. Gladion, we don't take prizes. We will prize something good every single game, probably multiple good cards. We got a lot of good cards. So if you have a tech that you really need, play the Gladion. Get out of your prizes. You're good to go. Obviously, next set, we get the uh, Keonia. I forget the name, but you get to take three cards from your hand, put them in your prizes, take three prizes. So even more powerful, this deck probably is going to become even better, actually, once that set drops. Guzma lets us switch out of the active. We end up in awkward situations where our opponent wants to boss something and just like, two shot or like vile plume for example cool go ahead and guzma get out of the active the switch card and a gust card so our opponent no longer has an attacker in the active i already talked about lucimine literally the most broken card in expanded right now this thing has single-handedly destroyed the entire format if you want me to go deeper into it let me know i'm happy to make a video talking about and explaining why lucimine is ridiculously broken and should not have gotten unbanned but this card with dual brains magnezone says we can play any supporter an infinite number of times every single game also get back our stadium that's why we play one silent lab and get it back forever and drawing cards is good disrupting our opponent also very good late game you will give up prizes with this deck you will constantly have games where you're just like i have to give up four maybe even five prizes and your opponent to one set up your board set up the lock you're good to go we have plumeria plumeria lets us discard energy from any pokemon also discard two cards which can be nice because under item lock you, uh, you can't discard things. You can't play items. So you may as well get them out of your deck. So when you play your N, you don't draw them again. And your opponent very intelligently sits behind something on the bench, just starts attacking to it. I don't care. Lusamine for Plumeria. Plumeria, discard two cards, get rid of the energy. Next turn, Lusamine, grab the Plumeria again, 
And the, you know, every time you grab a second Lusamine too, so you can play Lusamine every single turn because Lusamine can grab a different. So Plumeria kind of prevents that because under item lock, they can't accelerate energies. They attach one per turn. We remove one per turn. You may say, won't you run out of cards because you have to discard two every turn? No. I mean, yes, but they will run out of energy way before you run out of cards. Ranger, incredibly important against item lock, Vikavolt, as well as Distort Noivern. Very common, uh, both in Mewtwo decks and Tina Chomp. And of course, the Vikavolt common in, again, Tina Chomp as well as Picarom. Also good against ADP because they go altered creation. You got a Ranger. They put us on such a short clock. Four Stevens Resolve. If any of your Stevens Resolves ever stick, as in your opponent doesn't enter Marnie you out of your hand, you just win the game usually, which is kind of ridiculous. Search your deck for up to three cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck, your turn ends. You're not going to attack anyway. We attack like once or maybe twice per game. So Stevens, really good. Who cares if your turn ends? You just go grab Rare Candy, Triple Acceleration, and Evomancy Ore Beetle. You're good to go. There's other stuff you can grab too. It depends on the situation. Knowing what Steven's for is one of the biggest challenges with this deck. Blur Grunt, discard an energy, attach your opponent's active Pokemon. Smart opponent will play around it and power up the bench. That's what Plumeria is for. But if they don't, Blur Grunt means we don't have to discard any cards, which is even better for us. Team Rocket's handiwork, flip two coins for each heads, discard two cards from your opponent's deck. Aggressive milling is good, especially when you know your opponent plays a singular out to something. Going aggressive handiwork every single turn with that loose mean chain or that Cynthia Caitlin chain or whatever just gets rid of those cards. And sometimes you RNG their one out out of their deck and you just win the game there. Plus, we win faster. Three teammates. If one of your Pokemon was knocked out, spoiler alert, you always have a Pokemon knocked out early in the game. If your opponent takes zero prizes, you will always win the game. So teammates, very often alive. Search your deck for up to two cards, put them into your hand. This lets us get our Orbital combo, or if our opponent makes like Marnie plus Knockout play or something like that, and combo off of teammates. If our opponent goes Guzma, KOs our Vile Plume with Item Lock, you can go teammates for Energy Rescue Stretcher, Stretcher back the Vile Plume, put an Energy, Evomancy it back out. There's a lot of combos you can make with teammates. Four Triple Acceleration Energies. We need it. There's no way to search it. You know, we only have two Orbeetles because we can PCOM for it. We can't do anything to find a triple except teammates or Steven. For capture energies, not losing turn one is very important. Capture is also nice. It makes things a pivot and it's just an extra energy for Evomancy. Sometimes you attach to one of your blip bugs, find another blip bug. If the one with the energy survives, that's just an extra Pokemon you get to Evomancy out. And one DCE, it's here for the Luke Metal. It's also. You know, it's still two Pokemon off of Evo Manzi, which is incredibly powerful. There's a lot of options. This type of deck, if you want to play it, highly suggest it. It is a very fun deck to play. It can be frustrating at times because sometimes you have a turn where your opponent Marnies you turn one and you draw four stage to lose. I will admit the game we playing was not the first game that we played. We had one game where my opponent ended me turn one and uh, I drew five stage twos. And uh, we scooped after that. But the next game went much better. I went second. You'll see it. We actually got set up, which is incredibly important. One of the biggest struggles with this deck. So if you want to play this deck, I highly suggest kind of sit down, think about each matchup. What do I want to do? And you can roll from there. But I think this deck is a good test of your skill, a good challenge to how well can you think through everything. And of course, very fun. None of these cards are used that often. <laughs> like we have a lot of these stage twos in standard. No one uses them. And now we get a chance to use them. The Sun Pheasant. Most of us didn't know what it did, but Sander found it and uh, embodied some people with it. So anyway, let's go ahead and check out this game against Pikachu and Zekrom. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check out this game. Again, already pre-recorded. Shout out to my friend uh, Slap for hitting us up with the game too. I tried the expanded ladder. Boy, the expanded ladder really sucks. <laughs> so uh, we were able to get uh, some games off of the expanded ladder, hence the no timer. So we have our opening hand, got the Jirachi start. I probably don't have to tell anyone starting Jirachi is ideal, but we're going to go ahead and start this Jirachi and we're going second. Also very important. Going second is nice because uh, you can actually set up. We have a Stevens in hand. Uh, this hand's kind of actually gas. So see what we're up against. Uh, we are up against, we don't know currently, but I know 
Slap, we agreed to play the peak round match. The peak round match felt interesting. It felt uh, fairly skillful. He has two routes that he can go with. Uh, they can go with either the Vika Volt route to try and prevent us from setting up, or they can go with the peak ROM route and try and vomit energies everywhere. Which one is better? I'm not actually sure which one's better for peak ROM. I will say the Vika Volt is a little scary early. Once we get set up, it's not scary at all. The peak ROM isn't scary early, but late, it puts a lot of pressure on us. So I'm not sure which one's better. It goes with the Vika Volt route. So we top deck a PCOM. Awesome. Hand is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We want to go ahead and order of operations. We're going to Stellar Wish first and see what we get. Hit that Stellar Wish. There's a PCOM and a Plumeria. Which one's better? Uh, neither are like super exciting. I think the PCOM's a bit better just in case. You know, next turn we're going to try an Evomancy. Uh, maybe we want a PCOM. Maybe we top deck something. Okay, cool. We misplay. Sick. Bench the Blip Bug. The next set we can do here is go ahead and computer search. Computer search away the items. I think would have been ideal because we would have had a second PCOM to grab a second blip bug. The reason I'm thinking we go grab a second blip bug is my opponent can disrupt my hand or they can play Guzma. If they disrupt my hand, cool. Then I want a second blip bug because I might dead draw after that. If they go Guzma, I want a second blip bug so that I can actually get set up. So here we're kind of thinking, uh, do I go to Stevens? Looking back, no, 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 we definitely go computer search. Uh, we can get rid of the field blower. Field blower is not really for this matchup and it's probably not going to come in huge handy here. And then ideally, I think we would actually go and get rid of, so this is going to be another misplay. We want to keep the PCOM because if we top deck a Pokemon that we have to PCOM back in, ooh, we messed up. So getting rid of something like the Plumeria probably would have been better here, but to be fair, the Plumeria shouldn't even be, should be a second PCOM. So we're getting set up again. My opponent can't Guzma and disrupt my hand. So I think this is the optimal play for either way. If they Guzma, cool, that's fine. If they disrupt my hand, I've got two turns now to draw out of it. So now we're going to go ahead and Steven's resolve. We've got the triple acceleration already in hand. So what do we need? We need the rare candy. We need the uh, Ore Beetle. And my opponent's setting up Vika Volt. So we need that Pokemon Ranger so that we can play items next turn. We're watching on fast forward so you didn't see it, but I did go check for the ranger during that last search to give me an idea of what we need. So we're good to go. If my opponent goes for the Guzma play, we're fine. If my opponent goes for the hand disruption, annoying, but we'll have two turns to draw into the cards that we need. Plus we can still get down like a Zacian, for example, or something like that. I think we're good. Now there is a debate. Oh, what if we had gone for more of a setup route? At this point, I don't think that's necessary. I think going aggressive on our end is correct because if they don't disrupt our hand, we're fine. And if they do disrupt our hand, we don't want to grab like our Zacian or something like that to get more set up. So Slap's going to be digging here. He's looking for, I don't know, looking for Marnie, Guzma, and something. But definitely didn't want to research that hand. That's the moral of the story. He knows that he has to do either a Guzma or a hand disruption on this turn. I'm not sure what he has access to as well. Let's see. That Vika Volt is very big. A little scary. Because he can paralyze and bolt this turn. And if I happen to pull off the combo, he's got an Oko on anything he wants the next turn. There's Trainer's Mail. Let's see, what does he get? But we're currently fine. We're just sitting here saying, I hope there's no hand disruption. We are in such a good spot. And there is no hand disruption. He does draw into the Guzma. Guzma up the blip bug. And going to go for that paralyzing bolt. Correctly, VS Seekers, he acknowledges. My opponent played Stevens last turn. There's a very good chance they're going to pull off everything they need this turn. I'm going to play out my items now. And there's the paralyzing bolt. Thankfully, we played around this specific scenario. We draw into a Gladion. That's fine. All we got to do is Ranger. That lets us use items again. Candy. Ore Beetle. Triple Acceleration. We can Evo Mancy for three. So here, what do we want to go for? We want to set up Item Lock. We want to set up... What's it called? Magnazone. And in this situation, there's a lot of other good choices. We can go Stoutland. We can go Aegislash. We can go Unpheasant potentially, but probably not necessary to go Unpheasant this early. Unpheasant is a... They have to knock out my Vileplume before I care about Unpheasant. I think the best choice here 
is actually going to be the Burning Shadows Vileplume. And the reason is, if my opponent pops off, they start to make plays, the Vileplume can stall and let us get reestablished. So we can always hide behind this Burning Shadows Vileplume as long as we need. Because as of right now, my opponent doesn't actually have enough prize cards to win the game <laughs> based off of the Vileplume. Yep, we know he's got the Guzma in hand. So we know that some sort of play like this is happening. We don't currently have a response, but like I said, we can hide behind that vile plume and be good to go. Wrote the Drachi, we top deck the double. Now, ooh, we can make some plays. Now the double colorless energy, we can potentially make a play where we go like Guzma, get the orbital in the active, find the stretcher, vile plume it back in. So uh, we, got, we have some cool choices. Let's go ahead and Stellar Wish first, do the unknown. And Steven's handiwork. Steven's is the most useful as of right now. Because there's a chance we want a Steven's. Depending on what we can Gladion for. I think we want a Gladion first. Kind of see what's prized. A good player already checked their prizes. I didn't. I checked for the Ranger. I checked for my triples. I know a triple is prized. That's kind of cool. But like, it doesn't really do me any good right now. Yeah, grab the Steven's. We're going to check the Gladion. See what's prized. A lot of good stuff. The second Lusamine is prized and the Stretcher is prized. Teammate's cool. Steven's cool. So we could have potentially gone Gladion for teammates, played the teammates, but there's something we really needed teammates for. We already have a Steven's in hand. The Lusamine is good. So the question now becomes do I go for the Stretcher? The Stretcher is the immediate, I can get Vileplume reestablished this turn. The Lusamine is the long game. Do I need Lusamine to win this game? I do not actually need Lusamine to win this game because I've got the Cynthia Caitlin in deck. So if I can reestablish item lock, we shouldn't need the Lusamine because we can go Lusamine and Cynthia Caitlin loop over and over again. We've got the Magna Zone good to go. My opponent can't KO me next turn. Like they can't go uh, Guzma KO anything. And so the stretcher feels like the most optimal play. That way we can get that vile plume reestablished. There we go. Guzma, so we can get the orbital in the active. It's actually probably a misplay. We should have Guzma the Crobat because the Dedene could attack. Not really a threat, but like it could attack. The Crobat can't attack. Could tingle your turn, get the Dedene off the field. You know, stuff can happen. Stuff can happen. But the DC, go ahead and shuffle. Unfortunately, we do have to shuffle both back in the deck. That's fine. Evomancy, we get two Pokemon. 100% of the time we go with the Vile Plume. Now the second question is, what else do we want? We go Aegislash, we can go Desnor, Obstagoon, and Stout. Obstagoon, pretty useless. We don't need to take any KOs. The ability is not useful at all here. Desnor, not really useful. My opponent probably plays four at most special energies and like 10 regular energy. So now we're between Aegislash and Stout. The reason we're going to go Aegislash here is the minus 30 means that like a Pikaram can't actually KO any of our stage twos, which is a big deal. Because we're at a point in the game where the only way my opponent can make a comeback is by setting up a Pikaram manual. They can do that in two turns. If they attach and we miss energy, there we go. The Unpheasant's never correct. I don't know why I went for that. It's probably a misclick. But the only way they can win the game real here is really by setting up a Pikaram. The Aegislash says, uh, you can set up a Pikaram, but that's, I'm still going to have extra turns to deal with. The Stoutland, cute, might have actually been the optimal play, but I think the Aegislash just feels significantly better. Just lets us tank, lets us potentially set up the Cheryl chaining for, you know, ever. We know Cheryl's in deck. And now what can my opponent do? Not a whole lot. They could potentially Guzma. They only play so many Guzmas because they also play VS Seekers. And even then, Paralyzing Bolt does 20 damage. Well, I guess they have the Muscle Band, but they actually have nothing. So now we can't Plumeria. Plumeria discards two cards. So we're just going to go ahead and Steven's Resolve. And we're going to go ahead and grab cards to set us up even better for next turn. AZ lets us pick up the Drachi and potentially Evomancy out the Stoutland or grab a Munchlax. I think I'd like to see the Cynthia Caitlin here as well. Let's just get back a supporter and draw some cards, which is nice. There's almost no chance we get knocked out next turn, so teammates isn't particularly good here. Cynthia Caitlin's always better than Lusamine here, I think. Although Lusamine's not a terrible choice. 
and the silent lab just to throw, slow my opponent down to prevent uh, something like this. They pull a Lele probably off the top. Gonna grab Marnier and who knows. They do play both normally. Pull a Guzma. Okay. Interesting play by there, my opponent. And that's fine. They're gonna paralyze them both. They wanna take out this Vile Plume. I can't say I blame them for that. We can go ahead and Lusamine, grab our own Guzma back. We could also Plumeria. The issue with Plumeria here is my opponent can still knock me out next turn. I actually think I would have rather gone with that Lusamine play. Throw down the lab, now say, uh, you can't do a whole lot. So they need Thunder Mountain energy out of the six card hand with no ability. There's the end. Ooh, they could still get there. I said, I think that was a sketchy play. I think I should have got out of the active. Thankfully, they whiff. We needed them to whiff really badly there. So from here, we'll go and throw a capture on the active so we can potentially manually retreat it. We don't really need the capture energies anymore. And there's a world where we want to do that. And we can hit pass. No reason to Cheryl. We're hoping for a top deck. That is, uh, that's where we're at. Never mind. My opponent end themselves into the mark. You'll love to see it. And then we draw a beautiful, beautiful hand. So now we can get this thing out of the active. First thing we want to do is Cynthia Caitlin. Grab back the Lusamine. Every time you use Cynthia Caitlin, you want to get back Lusamine. Every time you Lusamine, you want to get back Cynthia Caitlin. If you prize one of your Lusamine. That is very important. This is an infinite chain. We want to continually recycle Lusamine and or Cynthia Caitlin with each other. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, like if you're winning the game on that turn, or obviously if you don't prize your Lusamines, you're in an even better slot. Start with the Cynthia Caitlin, discard the Ore Beetle. We don't need it anymore. Get back the Lusamine. Yep. Do the random one first, the one that's going to draw us those cards. Grab the Lusamine. Draw three, we've got the Guzma, get this thing out of the active. We're going to go ahead and throw the Burning Shadows Vile Plume in the active. And hit done. Ideally, we want to AZ that Jirachi and shove a Munchlax down there so we can start recycling resources every single turn. They pass, now we're in a good spot. We can Lusamine, grab Plumeria. We can Plumeria to get rid of one of those energies. Yeah, Plumeria and Cynthia Caitlin. That way we keep our infinite loop up. Opponent sends me the uh, well played. Because uh, at this point, <laughs> they're actually about to scoop it up. Because they have nothing going on in their hand, but we continue that loop over and over again. So next turn, we top deck. If they with energy attachment there, and judging from the scoop, they did, they were already down a, quite a few energies, actually. If I remember correctly, they were down like five or six basic energies by now. If they don't have an energy in hand, we just go ahead and Cynthia Caitlin. Get back the Plumeria, Plumeria off another energy. And by this point, we're just kind of winning the game. Every energy that hits the board, we discard it. Every time an energy doesn't hit the board, we handiwork, discard cards from their deck. And that is an infinite loop until we can eventually get that Munchlax. AZ the Jirachi get the Munchlax as well. And then we just keep the loop up, plus Snack Search every single turn. Hopefully you enjoyed the game. This is a tough matchup. The way my opponent chose to play it was potentially punishing. To me, but thankfully, like I said, we had the Ranger play. They were not able to draw into the hand disruption off of the Dedene. We played around the Guzma play. And then once that lock is set up, we're in full control at that point. If you just kind of keep everything moving, then you're good to go. So hopefully you enjoy the deck. Let me know what you think about it below. Let me know if you're going to try it out or if you just wanted to see what was up with it. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the other YouTube stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.